listening to the Progressive Radio Network, PRN.FM. I'm Katherine Davis, and this is Heart of Mind Radio for the New Millennium. I'm Katherine Davis, and I am pleased to be joining you today and asking you to enjoy yourself, enjoy your life, engage with life, engage with the activities that are happening around us this coming summer. And we want you to consider participating, to be alive and engaging and to sit under the sun and to listen to music and have a wonderful experience. And you also have that opportunity to connect with other people on the environment, 
on health, on so many different levels as you engage and enjoy. And your opportunity to do that is the Clear Water Festival. And it will be coming this month. You won't want to miss it. The Clear Water Festival is June 15th and 16th at Croton Point Park in Croton on the Hudson in Westchester County. And you can actually find out a lot more about this at the website clearwaterfestival.org if you want to go into some depth. And you'll see once you've gone to that site, like, whoa, I want to do this. I want to be there. I want to be part of this event. I have attended quite a few in the past, and it's just an amazing experience. There are many stages, there are expos, there are exhibits, there are so many things you can engage with, and especially undertaking this process of cleaning up our environment and learning how we can network with each other and take action and really begin to make a difference for the world in which we live. And what could be better than that? It's a win because you're going to have a good time. The Clearwater Festival coming up and it is again June 15th and 16th, Croton Point Park, Croton on the Hudson. We just heard a piece of music, Answer the Muse, and the piece is called Essence and these are one of the many performers that will be there and we want to let you know that this is pretty cool. I'm going to play another piece of music that you might recognize. Also going to be there at the event is Rebel Diaz.
say the violence ain't good. They can't ask me to tell them to stop the violence. Because I can't tell nobody who's hungry what to do. I got to let her feed them. You're listening to Heart of Mind. We're talking about the Clearwater Festival, and it's two days of this amazing festival, and it is an event inspired by Pete Seeger's desire to clean up the river over 40 years ago, the Great Hudson River Revival. Initially helped raise the funds to build the sloop Clearwater, which has since become a world-renowned floating classroom and a symbol of effective grassroots action. And it's a wonderful, wonderful event. I'm actually going to be there myself. Let's hear just a little bit more music. We'll be right back. In a moment when the skies are gray, when I feel like running away, I close my eyes, close my eyes. Start to bob and sway In a moment When the chips are down Open my mouth I can't make a sound I clap my hands I clap my hands Rise and stand and say I know the one love lives in me I know the one love lives in me. I know the one love lives in me. I know the one love. Hey, hey. In a moment when you can't decide, a moment all torn up inside, quiet your mind. Quiet your mind. Let your love light shine. And we'll be able to get back to a little bit more of this music as we go forward. And we are being joined by Jason Samuel. He is the Clearwater Festival Director, also founder and executive director of Movement Music records and producer of Seegerfest. Welcome, Jason, to Heart of Mind. Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to talk with me today. Oh, yes, yes. I think that this is such a wonderful opportunity and actually just great fun, great clean fun. I've been to the festival several times and really excited about it. Me too. I thought you would be better able to let people know what they will experience than I. So I'm happy that you could join us today and let us know. Um, what what will people have the opportunity to participate with and all the different varieties of music and stages? There's a lot. Yeah, it's really a jewel. It's really something that doesn't exist anywhere else. It's really something that, you know, I've been to the festival probably seven, between seven and nine times. And I've been to many music festivals out there and many, you know, environmental festivals out there. And nothing compares to it. And the reason why, we're talking about eight different performance spaces, eight different stages that people are performing on. One hundred, up to 100 acts with something like three or 400 musicians total that are coming in throughout the weekend where you have workshops you have family stages, you have storytelling uh, stages, you have a big main stage, you have a little bit of a smaller stage with lesser-known artists, you have some of the greatest names ever to bless the stage, such as Mavis Staples or Ina DeFranco or Railroad Earth or The Wailers or Immortal Technique, who are going to be playing on the main stage this year, to, you know, a lot lesser-known folk who might only be known through certain scenes, the activist scenes or the Occupy scenes or things like that, uh, such as maybe Matt Pless or Kristen Graves, children's singers like Joni Lee and Darlene Graham. First times at this festival, a lot of people are getting to participate on some of the smaller stages and uh, some, 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 on the, some lesser known acts on the bigger stages as well. And then it's not just about music. This whole thing is really about the environment. 
And the music is there to bolster the message about the environment. And the environment is obviously key to our organization, the Hudson River Sloop Clearwater organization. It's what we were built on. And it's seen in every corner of the festival. And I do mean corners. There's there's so many different corners and spaces for you to check out in the festival. Every hundred feet you walk, you find something new to check out, whether it's artisanal food and farm area or it's the vetted, juried, craft marketplace, uh, craft crafts area um, where handcrafters from all over the country are coming and showing their work. Um, and, you know, somebody took their time to look through all of these, all of the artwork that they have and, you know, decide whether we're going to have this artist or that artist come in and display. So we, we really, really take the time to make sure that it's, you know, stuff that people are really going to love. Um, and then, you know, to the, you know, you walk to another part of the park and you have an activist, you know, an activist area where there's all different activist tents set up, different nonprofit organizations. You walk to other areas and you have a big marketplace or a green living expo. Every little area that you go into, you find a separate um, nuance of the festival to take in. And it's really something special. And it's really something special how, you know, again, things that you'll never see at music festivals. You don't see, you know, six or seven different areas of vending of all different kinds. You don't see eight stages. You don't see uh, this not-for-profit music, not-for-profit organization that's able to carry the weight of such a large undertaking um, by having nearly a 1,000 volunteers participate in order to um, participate and basically run the show, um, in order to put the music festival on. Yeah, it's amazing. It is amazing. And the park itself is beautiful. Uh, It's a lovely park. It sort of feels outside of New York City, but it's close enough that it's easy to get to from people from the whole region. But it's also beautiful on the water you could really enjoy the environment there are beautiful trees you can sit in the grass you can really relax it's a day where you can just let go of all the stress and the hassle of our everyday existence and just seep into nature enjoy the music because it really music to me is one of the greatest gifts that we have as a humanity because it really just it neutralizes and reminds us that we all have this deep inner connection with each other and we're all there and relating to this music and being at a concert being at an event in which you're all sharing this experience is very very special it's uplifting and it reminds us that yeah actually humanity is a great thing and we can come together and we can do wonderful things together it it really is a way of reminding us you know no, stepping that, away. That, that line come together, you said it. You know, I mean, our great and late founder, Pete Seeger, uh, who turned 100, uh, who would have turned 100 this year, um, his spirit is, is 100 years old and probably probably hundreds of years older, thousands of years older. I would say. Uh, yeah, uh, he, he was an old, old spirit. He, he always wanted to make sure that people sung together. And if they sing together the things that we can accomplish, it's not just about singing and opening your mouth and belting out a tune. It's about what we can accomplish in the beautiful music and take that any way you want, the beautiful music that we can create with one another. Um, you know, that is a tenant of this festival is for people to come together, sing together, act as one, think about the environment, and to be able to act together, to be able to get these people to have that feeling in their heart and then hopefully go home and take that with them throughout the weeks and months in between the next revival and do something about the environment with that new community that they just attach to at, at the festival. Like I said, this is, this is a festival that's... It's, I'm, I'm, I'm the director and I'm the producer, but I don't put this festival on. I have little to do with putting this festival on. The people that put this festival on are the thousand volunteers 
that come together to put this festival on, who've been doing it, some of them, for all 42 years of the festival. Um, it is amazing. It is incredible. To, sometimes I just sit and watch and see people communicate with one another and watch this magic happen. This past four or five months that I've been helping put together this festival, I like to just sit back and watch as this magic happens between all of these volunteers that are singing together and acting together to create this one beautiful and wonderful weekend that we all know and love so much. It's just a wonder to see what they can accomplish working together. So many differences in personalities. So there's lots of frustrations that go on in planning the festival. There's lots of differences of opinions. There might even have been an argument or two. But in the end, everybody comes together for the same reason, to carry that torch of Pete and Toshi Seeger and just carry that torch of environmentalism and music that matters and come together as a community and sing together. And that's the beauty of this festival. And it's, and it's done in such a way that, you know, you'll never have that experience elsewhere. I so agree with you because, as you said, that unity, that unity is a spirit that opens up on the inside of you. So you're not just singing with your mouth, you're singing with your heart. You're, you're, yes. you're making that connection at a very deep level. And it's a model for a lot of us who are active in the world and do want to be activists in the world. And how do you move through those kinds of conflicts and differences? And I think it is because of keeping the eyes on the goal of what you're going to accomplish and what yeah. you're really creating and bringing into the world. And yeah. I believe that everyone who participates, who comes to an event like this, is carrying that energy, making it larger, and then like ambassadors moving out into the world with that transformative energy. So people who come to this event will be empowered from that, will be uplifted from it. It'll be a way of not only enjoying the day, but carrying that into your life, taking it yeah. back home, taking it to work. So it's, it's a transformative experience in yeah. many ways, at least from my perspective. Well, I mean, it, it was transformative enough for me to go from being an attendee for the past, I think it's been the past seven out of the past nine years I've I've been an attendee from wanting to be an attendee to uh, eventually, you know, I, I got introduced not long after I started going to Clearwater, I got introduced to the Seeger family to, to wanting to carry that torch and then, and then become a board member. And then from becoming a board member, dedicate my life for these four or five months that it's taken to plan the festival to creating this festival. That's what spark was lit under me from coming to this festival one time. I just wanted to keep coming back and be as much of a part of it as possible because I thought it was one of the most beautiful experiences I ever had. Um, and I've been there as a vendor. I've been there as an attendee. I've been there as a not-for-profit organization. And from every angle of the festival, you, you know, you experience it in a different way. Um, but from every angle, it's, it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful thing to see. It is. And I think that as people go there, they will come to realize how important it can be and how important it is. Next to me is Margot Thunderbird from the Shinnecock Nation of Long Island. And she will now take over. A bit earlier, we heard from Mavis Staples with a piece called One Love. And now we're going to take a break to hear a recording from the closing of the 2011 Clearwater Festival featuring Margot Thunderbird of the Shinnecock Nation. Pete says we have a few minutes, but I want to do a song and you're going to have to help me out. So we're going to all rely on the magic 
that we've created this weekend by bringing together not only old friends and relatives, but generations. And the whole theme of the festival this year was generations because one thing about being grown up and making it and surviving to be an adult is that responsibility that we carry to teach and pass on what we've learned to our children. As a native person, I'm taught and all my people are taught that my steps, the steps I take today, I have to think about seven generations ahead. So what I do affects my people for up to 150 years. So I want to take everything that we've built here this weekend, all the wonderful music, the songs, the heart, the love, the reunions, the generations, and I want you to help me to sing this song that I sang many, many years ago when I was very young and just starting out. And both these men were there, and they have both been real instrumental in my staying with the music. We're all going to sing it together, but I'm going to ask the men, Pete, just like I did all those years ago, to sustain the note. Now, it was a lot higher back then. I'm not going to make it as high as it was. I'm, I'm older. I've learned. There aren't really limitations to what people can do. <laughs> but I'm going to ask the men to sing this note. And it's the high note. And what it represents is the men hold up the sky to protect the women, the children, and the generation. So fulfill your responsibility, folks. And you men sing this note. All right. Now, in the spirit of cooperation, you're going to hold that. And the guy next to you, when you have to take a breath, he's going to still be holding it. So make sure that you let him take a breath when it's his turn, so that the note is held continuously like the canopy of the sky above us, okay? okay. Now the women, you have to learn quick, but women always do. <laughs> so it goes like this. of our lives and living in the harmony of our mother earth gives us such great delight that we and we recognize that the cycles of the seasons are the cycles of our lives we are all connected we are a community so men your note to reach out to those of you who may have attended in the past to come back and for those of you who haven't experienced it do that make that commitment right now and it's a father's day weekend i believe so celebrate yourself as a father bring your father bring your son 
wives and women bring your fathers and husbands and celebrate them as we celebrate the world and the environment and this great music because I, I am sure that there is music for every taste that you'll be able to enjoy. Go to the website and get those tickets so you'll have plenty of opportunity to enjoy and participate. And that website is www.clearwaterfestival.org. You can find all about the festival, ticketing, um, and more at www.clearwaterfestival.org. That's right, and it's a beautiful website. It's amazing. Uh, Thank beautiful. you. It shows pictures and gives you information about the performers, the attractions. You can get the tickets online if you like, which you might want to do if you want to sleep over because some people are camping out for the weekend. Oh, so. yeah. So the camping is going to be packed this year. It's going to be great. Yeah, so there's a lot of ways to participate. Some of you may want to just do one day, and you might want to go to the website to do that. You even volunteer. Wow, it's still possible to volunteer. You could walk in day of and volunteer. Wow, that's pretty amazing too. So, Absolutely. So there's nothing lost here. Everyone has an opportunity to participate. And for those of you who love Clearwater Festival, who love the legacy that it brings into the world. And I am so happy that you could join us today, Jason. Yes, I know thank you so you, much for having me. I know that you are sort of uh, the daddy today, and, and your children are waiting for you to return to them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if you have some thoughts that we might have missed, please do share. No, you know, I'm just, I'm really super excited. It's a pleasure, and I appreciate you uh, taking the time, especially to speak with me today. Uh, you're most welcome, and I'm glad, really glad to have, be able to do it. So thank you so much. And that was Jason Samuel. He is the Clearwater Festival director, and he has other projects that he's done, including being founder and executive director of Movement Music Records, in which he did a lot of the Occupy Wall Street. He was very involved in music from that uh, movement, and he also a producer of Seegerfest. an old man on the subway yesterday said now that I'm great no one cares what I have to say back in my prime I fought hard for what's right kids these days are too afraid yes I started a revolution with my own hands wasn't blinded by illusion I took a stand Yes, I started a revolution, did not back down, it was time to demand. On my way home, I felt changed and a little crazy. When you realize life's a game, you're not the same. The world's a kind if you're raised poor and want something more. I'm born in a certain place. Have a certain face Yes, I'm starting a revolution With my own hands Won't be blinded by illusion I'll take a stand Yes, I'm starting a revolution I won't back down It's time to demand Time to demand Not to worry, but their definition of truth is worthy of fury. It's their casual relationship with honesty that burns in me. Let's not believe any more of the stories. Yes, we're starting a revolution with our own hands. Won't be blinded by illusion. We'll take a stand. Yes, we're starting a revolution. We won't back down. It's time to demand. There will be resistance. There will be the other side. I believe in our persistence. I believe it with my life. Go till there's nothing more to offer. 
Nothing more to give or let's leave Nothing left to long for Nothing left to forgive Yes, we're starting a revolution With our own hands Won't be blinded by illusion we'll take a stand Yes, we're starting a revolution We won't back down It's time to demand Time to demand That was Demand, Start a Revolution by Kristen Graves. There's going to be lots of information at the festival in terms of how to become more efficient in terms of your actions and things you can do to preserve the environment. You're going to have a lot of uh, information about how to be active and network. You might be going to some of the vendors and want to support people who are doing ecologically sound business models or product models. You might want to look at that. Uh, there's going to be so much going on there, the Clearwater Festival and and it is coming up, I believe it is Father's Day weekend, Saturday and Sunday, June 15 and 16. And it's at Croton Point Park in Croton on the Huston, Westchester County. And the festival gates open to attendees at 9 a.m. And the website is clearwaterfestival.org. I would encourage you to go there anyway just to see how beautiful an event this is is going to be. It's one of those things where you really are going to be happy that you took the time and you made the effort to be there, to be part of this event. All the way from Kingston, Jamaica, the legendary Wayland! Yes! Yes! There's a naturalistic blowing through the air. Yeah. 
It'll be amazing. I'm looking under attractions and it says Clearwater Great Hudson River Revival prevents a virtual world's fair of environmental education, water and land activities, activism and inspiration and performances on and off stages. So it is very kid friendly kid and family attractions. The Clearwater Festival offers a plethora of entertainment and activities for the whole family, including the family stage, children's area, river beach combing, and net signing. Clearwater's discovery and tideline education. Jugglers, clowns, roving artists, face painting, and henna artistry. And then there are field attractions as well. There's an activist area, an artisanal food and farm market, handcrafters village, food vendors, green living expo, a marketplace, a working waterfront, and it features at the festivals are Clearwater's mission-based environmental action, green cities, and tide line discovery education tents. So it's going to be music, performances, education, connecting with like-minded people, like-hearted people, people who care about the world, and also coming up very soon, and that is the Left Forum. For those of you who really want to get into the intellectual, mind-based connection to the heart and to the world, to really look at what we can do in the world, the Left Forum from 628 to the 30th, the end of the month, actually 628 is my birthday. The Left Forum 2019, what is left to be done? One does not have to watch a film or read a novel to encounter the present dystopian reality of the world. Faced with ongoing economic and political crisis, recent spikes in reactionary and fascist movements, and the prospects that we are and have reached a point of no return with respect to ecological destruction and life on this planet. One may wonder what is left to be done. To begin to answer this question and find hope, and potential despite catastrophe, the left needs to imagine and enact alternatives while recognizing those already in existence. At a time when it may seem that most alternatives and options have been exhausted, what types of progressive and radical responses and possibilities can be proposed? What can we learn from past and current struggles and traditions moving forward? And it's Friday, June 28th, 
all the way through Sunday, June 30th. It's in Brooklyn, the Long Island University, Brooklyn One University Plaza. So this can be a very powerful month for you, the Clearwater Festival, and that comes up June 15th and 16th, and it's at the Croton Point Park in Croton on Hudson, Westchester County, the three-day Left Forum event. Both of them about engaging with each other, engaging in our activities, our activism, and really coming together to make a difference in the world. What a wonderful way to start out our summer experience by supporting and engaging with organizations that are doing the work of making the difference. Let's see, I'm going to play a piece, uh, Mavis Staples. I've got something that I really want to say Sometimes things just won't go your way But don't you worry when the sky turns gray Tomorrow is another day Life is bound to have ups and downs For every smile there will be a frown But you'll get through it Come what may, tomorrow is another day Everyone has problems, you need a little help You don't have to go through it all by yourself If you're feeling alone, pick up the phone When push comes to shove, talk to someone you love Happiness is the key to success stress is gonna leave you depressed don't forget to make some time for play tomorrow is another day just remember to love somebody laugh with somebody feel to somebody live for somebody love somebody laugh with somebody live for somebody give to somebody You probably made some mistake Life gives you lemons uh, Go and make a lemon cake Don't you worry Everything's gonna be okay Tomorrow is another day Gotta work for what you want Nothing comes automatic You'll get out what you put in No such thing as magic In the end it's all worth it uh, Practice make perfect uh, Put love in what you do something that I really want to say Sometimes things just won't go your way but Don't you worry when the sky turns gray Tomorrow is another day Life is bound to have ups and downs For every smile there will be a frown But you'll get through it Come what may Tomorrow is another day You're listening to Heart of Mind Radio for the New Millennium. This is the Progressive Radio Network, PRN.FM. I'm Katherine Davis. I hope you enjoyed this little show. And I featured two events, the Clearwater Hudson River Revival and the Left Forum both happening this month and if you want more information on those go to their websites you will find a link directly on the archive page of prn.fm heart of mind radio and their websites however are clearwaterfestival.org and leftforum.org 
For those of you who would like to get in touch with me directly, you can send an email to heartofmindradio at gmail.com. You can also visit our website, heartofmindradio.com. And I also want to let you know that we will be starting our Qigong meditation and movement classes in the parks at the end of June, beginning of July. We're going to have a morning class in Brooklyn on Tuesdays and a morning class at Chelsea Piers on Sundays and an evening class in Central Park, West 96th Street on Thursdays. And this is in addition to the ongoing classes at Studio Maya in Brooklyn. It's on Bergen Street. And you can find all that information by going to our website, qigongonline.net. Or it might be more judicious to send an email or to call and leave a message and I can get back to you with the schedule. My message line is 347-480-1694. That's 347-480-1694. I do hope to see you out and about this summer. I have come to the reasoning that summer is designed, divinely made, in order for all of us to shed our heavy clothes, shed our stress and our worries, to be able to enjoy our world, to enjoy each other, and to come to deeper understanding of our life and in our relationships and most significantly in our relationship with ourselves, in self-acceptance, self-compassion, self-love, and engagement, expansion, just to enjoy our life. So I want to thank you very much for joining me today and ask you to tune in again next Saturday at 6 p.m. for Heart of Mind Radio over the Progressive Radio Network, prn.fm. Have a beautiful and blessed and sacred week. Bye for now.